everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 30 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I'm making a handful of gearboxes. I thought that would be a cool time, right? Seems like fun, at least. And we're going to make some of them vertical, because why not? Um, I want to just see. I haven't quite measured how well this will work out, but we could give it a shot, right? How close are we? I'm just curious, because I have no idea if this will all be rotating the right way. But, I, it, it, maybe? Maybe? It's possible? So what if I did that, and then that, and that could be cool? Um, it's possible that I can make this whole thing spin from here. And that would be cool, right? So this was here, right? So we actually wanted to go one back, didn't we? That's right. It's not an angel ring direwolf. So we want gearbox and then vertical gearbox. And that should be it. Now, before we get to shenanigans on this rotational stuff, what I'm gonna do is um, probably break this. Cool. And then we're gonna do this connection here. We're gonna see what happens. Hey, that ain't too shabby. Now, is everything going the right direction or is this backwards? So this guy's going that way. That looks cool. That actually looks pretty good, right? Ain't that kind of cool? That is definitely kind of cool. <clears throat> now, I should be able to speed this thing up. Um, so what I can make and create, because there's a couple ways to speed things up. This way of doing big gears to small gears absolutely works, right? Absolutely works. Um, now, the other option, though, with create would be to make an encased drive chain. Oh, no, adjustable chain gear shift, relays rotation in a straight line, and to adjacent encased chain drives. Analog redstone provided to this block will control which size of drive wheel is engaged with attached chain drives. Uh, without a redstone signal, adjacent chain drives will relay the same speed. With a full strength signal, adjacent chain drives will relay exactly twice its speed. Anything in between will give results 1 to 2x its speed. So in other words, stuff. Uh, so we want an encased drive chain, right? That should be cool. And then we want adjustable chain. So we want probably like four of these. So electron tubes times four. Let's start with four and see how that goes, right? Sweet. So now if I'm not mistaken, now, and here's another thing I'm noticing. It did not light up this area as, as much as I would have hoped. The It seems to have a limit on how, on how high it can go. So I should probably make another feral flare lantern here and figure out where I'm gonna put you. I'm thinking like underground would be cool, right? So if we kind of centered ourselves here, I could do something like that. I like that plan. Okay, cool. So that'll light up the area inside here a little bit better, right? Um, so let's try out these gear shift dudes, adjustable chain gear shifts. So if I put one here and here, if I'm not mistaken, is that what we want? And then give it a redstone signal? I'm not sure if they need to be like, like that. That does not seem faster. I think they have to be next to each other, which is a little bit uh, not exactly hopefully great, but uh, we'll be fine. Gearbox. So if we did something like this. Close. Close. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. 
Now let's put all four in there. Hey, okay, come back here, you. Yeah. Now do you all need redstone signals? Hmm. That seemed like it was going slower, didn't it? It almost felt that way. Oh, there we go. Huh. So that seems faster. I have to figure out if there's like a one's faster, one's slower kind of deal. I'm not quite sure how this works. Doesn't that make that look go like it's slower now? Those definitely look faster. Can I chain these like this? Or do they have to be... Do you think they have to be like in pairs? They can't be in triplicate? Because they, they look like they can be. But then when I give you a redstone signal, he's like, nah, I'm slow now. So that's not ideal. What if I gave this one a redstone signal, though? Nope, also slow. So I'm thinking this might be the way to go. And that gets it spinning faster. So that's pretty neat. Hey, yeah, now everything's cooking. Nice. All right, definitely cooler, right? Now here's a question. If I remove you guys and replace you with belts, hey, what'd you do? Oh, you did do the thing I wanted you to do. Good. And put you here and here. Are you now spinning the right direction still? Yeah. Nice. Definitely cool. That's what I thought. I'm a little fuzzy in my brain still on, like, how many gear connections equal the same direction versus reversing the direction, but... Yeah, I mean, it works. Look at that. It works, right? So everything's moving the correct direction, right? Yes, everything seems to be, which is cool. I like it. Nice. And if I wanted that to go even faster, I could absolutely make that happen with some more gear shift dudes, right? I think I might want to make some more. I want those to be auto-craftable, I think. Um, so I think I think adjustable gear shafts I should add to the auto-crafting list. The only problem is I've yet to, well, two problems. Number one, I've yet to set up my next gold crafter downstairs. So that's one problem for sure. The other problem obviously is that I've yet to teach it how to make quartz automatically, but I think I can come up with a little something for that. That we can, you know, have fun with. So if I want four more gear shifts, we're missing one rose quartz. So I'm just going to make 10 at a time and some sandpaper. And if I put you in the offhand, I think that little deployer hand thingy can do this. And if it can't, we'll figure it out. But what I should be able to do is like export bus sandpaper into the hand. I don't know. We'll figure it out. I'll play with it. A little bit and we'll figure out a solution uh, but for now so if we want this to go four more faster boom 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 it crafts and that's cool beans so if we watch this with our goggles we'll see how much stress impact is running there's another thing we can get by the way which is the speedometer yes And that'll tell you how fast stuff's moving too. Um, now the speedometer, I'm gonna put here on the end, right before it connects in. And that'll tell you your current RPMs, right? So you notice here it's 64 RPMs. If I were to put it up here, it would be 16. Cool. So this way we can measure the RPMs uh, of the thing coming in. That's kind of cool. So if I want this to be all kinds of better, 
what I'm gonna wanna do is move this back a little bit. And let's put these like so. We'll do this, and then this, and then this, and then this, and then this, and then, this, and then that. Cool. So now his RPM is 16, but we got our redstone signals ready. So you're gonna make it 32, then you're gonna make it 64. I think I'm getting this, by the way. It's the gear chain that the things coming into is the one that you want to give a redstone signal to speed up. 128. 256. Booyah. Now we've got some fast moving stuff. Let's see how fast we make brass, shall we? I'm going to make 10 brass. You ready? Start. Woo! Look how fast it's going. That is cool. That is cool. That is cool beans right there. That is some fast stuff. And you know what's the best part of this? Is we can get rid of this old mess. Nice. Now as a reminder, because we're doing things at such a high speed, we have some pretty significant stress impact going on here. Like, actually some very significant stress impact going on here. We might, we might want to be a little bit careful. Uh, but we can use the stress-ometer, which needs another speed-ometer, by the way. to tell us what's up. Um, so I'm gonna put the stressometer here and then the speedometer here. So notice how 0% network stress, remaining capacity 8192. That's because we don't have any of our machines hooked up. But as soon as I do that, we're actually stressing this thing at 84% with just these two machines going. So maybe this is a little too fast. Luckily, I now have a way to slow things down with a single redstone signal. So that's awesome. So I could just leave these guys up here, and if things get too stressful, I can just turn off the redstone signals, and we should be cool, right? So now we're only using 21% of our capacity. So basically, the faster things run, the more stress it puts on the system. But that's okay. We have a good amount of stress units for now. And I was just corrected on my design. Technically, I don't think these guys need to be adjustable gear shafts. They can just be encased chain drives, and they'll be fine. Um, so that's another way to make this a little bit more of an efficient design because these things are cheaper to make than their counterparts. So if you don't need to adjust the speed with a redstone signal, use the encased chain drive instead of the adjustable chain gear shift. Neat. So now that we've got some fast operations going on in there, and I'm not done with that setup, by the way, there's more stuff I want to put in that windmill. Uh, what I'd like to do is set up a auto farming system. I'd like to farm these crops using create machines. And I feel like that could be cool. I feel like that could be cool. Well, that's not exactly what I wanted to do, but that's okay. Uh, let's put away some nonsense. So I've got this in here, I got that. That could be cool. Do I still have my, ooh, I have a golden hoe with mending on it. Beautiful. Yeah, that's totally loot that I found, by the way. But yeah, I thought, I thought it would be cool to build a create machine that will harvest these crops for us, right? So let's work on that. What I'm thinking is, and follow my logic here, I'd like a machine that will be kind of flush, right, with this wall, and it's gonna extend out and harvest all these crops for me, and then retract back in. And so it'll literally come out from this wall. I thought that would be cool. So let's play with Create's mobility stuff. Does that sound good? Now, we're not gonna need a ton of rotational force for this. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use the water wheels that I just harvested from the windmill area to build this machine. And we will encase it all entirely within this mountain area. And I think that will look pretty neat. So let's start with what we're gonna need, right? So what we're gonna ultimately need is um, 
let's 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 talk about what we're gonna need here because we're gonna need pistons and a few other things that we don't quite have the crafting for just yet um oh look i got farmland cool i have a way to get farmland now how did i get a bookshelf oh boy i have a pretty good idea of how i got a bookshelf yep that's how i got a bookshelf i was like why do i have a bookshelf on me Meh. Uh, yeah, I can't enchant that. Uh, something I can enchant? Nothing... Uh, yes, good. Level 30 is doable. Just making sure I could still enchant up to level 30. I didn't, like, put that bookshelf wrong. I didn't think I did, but yeah, you never know. Okay, so let's put away you guys for a minute. Um, so what we're gonna need to get this going from Create is the following. We're gonna want, um, sticky mechanical pistons. Uh, so I want to teach these, right, how to make these, right? So we're going to want sticky mechanical pistons. We're going to want regular mechanical pistons. We're going to want to know how to make piston extension poles. We're going to want to know how to make uh, da -da 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 -da. linear chassis, I think would be cool to know. Uh, and radial chassis would be cool to know. They're going to be important. Uh, eventually I'm going to want a lot of these things, but I want the mechanical harvester. That's the deal, right? Um, now this says iron plates from thermal. Do we have iron plates in here already? I don't know that we do. Iron plates. We do not have those on craft. So why don't I teach you how to make iron plates with the press? That would be cool, right? And I can, I can go ahead and pop that right in here. The same place we're making brass plates. Should work, right? Right? Um, what else, what else, what else am I gonna want here from create? Before I go downstairs and put all this stuff in there. That should be the gist of what I need. Uh, there's also the mechanical plow, but I don't think I want those. I want the harvester. Um, and if there's anything else I need, then we'll just, you know, figure out how to make it in a minute. That sound fair? So I'm coming down here rather than using that other thing, because I feel like it would be easier to come down here and just do that, and that's much better. Right, so let's talk about creates motion mechanics because they're pretty awesome. So to get this going, uh, we're going to need, and, and for now, well, yeah, let's build it over. Well, I haven't quite figured out what I want to do yet, but I think over here should be fine. What I'm going to do is do like a three by three into the mountain here, but then I'm going to like cover it back up in a minute uh, once I can yeah that looks good right so what we want to do is build a platform that's gonna eventually be one two three four five well I don't even know that it needs to be that long of a platform right I don't think so so what we want is a mechanical piston that's going to be sticky and we're gonna want like 10-ish of those. I guess we're getting 23, because that's a number. Um, and there's your sticky piston, right? And I want you to chill facing that way. Cool, yeah. I might, yeah, I think that's fine. And then we could have the things there. I want him back a little bit more. I want him back a little bit more. And let's make sure we have a little bit of dirt in our inventory so I can reuse it. So I want him centered here, but I want him back like here. Does that sound fair? And that's nice and centered to my farm. Okay. And then we're gonna want the piston poles to be able to go back, right? One, two, oops, wrong direction. Something tells me axes would be the better way to go here. Hey, all right, I definitely need my axe. I put it away thinking I'm not gonna need my axe for this part. I was incorrect. Actually, there is no tool for piston tool. Okay, cool. So for him to go forward, we're gonna go, he's gonna have blocks here and here. So realistically, he's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 11 piston poles is what we want. So one, two, three, four, five. So 11 should be cool. All right, that should be good. 
And like I said, I'm gonna fill this whole area back in with dirt so it looks like so it looks like uh, a thing again. And that should be neat. So then we're gonna want um, what we're gonna want is linear chassis. So let's get some linear chassis. I'm gonna get like 10 of them. Sounds like a good number to me. And these guys are cool. They can go like so. Um, now I think if I do this right, actually that's an ax to break that. Cool, okay, that works, right? Um, now what I'm gonna do is only make you a pole length of one for a minute, because I wanna test this real fast. All right, guys, so what I went and did is just real quick set up a water wheel off camera. So let's try this thing out, right? So I'm going to put a cog wheel here just so I can get the rotational energy where I want it, right? Uh, so I want it here-ish. And then I'm going to use this nifty gadget, the sequenced gear shift. This is a programmable gear shift designed to be used by rotating and moving platforms. So I'm going to plop that guy right here. Boom. Well, ish. Boom. That's better. Uh, and you'll see that he's now spinning, which is cool. Uh, and when we woke, open up the UI by right clicking on it, we'll see that there's several options here. And if you saw my spotlight on create, you know how this works. So I'm not gonna go too deep into this, but just know that because we're moving a piston, we wanna set this to piston. We're wanting it to move, let's say like just one meter at a time um, forwards. And then after it's done, let's have it wait for like half a second, just for fun and then piston one meter uh, backwards, reversed, and use your scroll wheel to change these, right? Um, and that should be cool. So now what'll happen is whenever this gets a redstone signal, it's gonna go ahead and execute the sequence programmed here. So it'll move it forward one meter, it'll wait half a second, 10 ticks is half a second, and then reverse it and move it back one meter. You ready? Whoop, boop. Cool? How cool is that? I think that's awesome. Now we can re-hook up our piston thing here because when we do that, it's still only gonna move one meter at a time. But now that we've got the piston length there, we can adjust this however we wish. Cool, and now it's moving two blocks forward. Cool, I like it. Now, the next thing we're gonna wanna do um, is get in range. We're gonna want some glue, which I prepared-ish ahead of time. I prepared the recipe. Uh, and what we're also gonna want is the harvester. We're gonna want like nine of these, right? So let's kick that off. Nice. Now I'm assuming it's making the iron sheets over there in the windmill area. And it looks like it's working just fine. So I'll take it, right? So anytime you wanna move anything on these guys, you're gonna to wanna to put some glue on the side that you're connecting to by right clicking like so, okay? And then you're going to want your mechanical harvesters on there. Now, these guys, because we're using this, we should make a wrench from Create just to demonstrate some of the functionality here. So let's... Do you not have gold sheets? Really? Really? I guess we need to teach you how to make gold plates. I thought one of the two had gold, but maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy. So creates wrench needs gold sheets, which are made with that. And I'm gonna pop that guy right in there so that now I can come over here and request the components for the wrench. Cool. We've got two of them. We've got three of them. Nice. So this is creates fancy little wrench. It's even got a little gear on the bottom that's spinning because that's how cool it is. Because that's how cool it is. Okay, uh, so with this guy, we can adjust this. Um, we can adjust the range by scrolling. So right now this is set to eight blocks in front of it move. We don't really need that. So we can really shrink this guy down to one. Now the cool thing is we can hold the control key and it'll adjust all of them because they're connected. So that's what these linear chassis do. Uh, they connect to the blocks in front of them and allow them to move. And again, I covered a lot of this in my spotlight so feel free to check it out. Now, in fairness, we don't need to use these linear chassis here. We could just use almost any block 
and super glue to get blocks connected. Basically, any blocks that connect to each other can have super glue between them and they'll be good to go. So rather than doing this, I could have had like smooth stone, like regular stone here, and put super glue in between each block and then in front of each block, and you'd have kind of the same effect. But meh, it's all good. Doesn't matter. So now, um, one more thing I want to do is have a chest here, right? Uh, let's pop it on this end. I'm just going to put it right on the end, and I'm going to put it like so. And what should happen now, when we push this whole thing forward, the chest should automatically collect the items from the harvesters. And that should be pretty cool. That's one of the cool things about Create, is you don't need to set up conveyor belts on your Create moving contraptions. They are one giant entity, and if there's storage in them somewhere, it will put the items in the storage. So put a chest on your moving structure, and it will take care of it, right? So let's try this out. One thing I'm not sure about is how it's going to handle the too tall thing there, but we'll find out, right? So now I want you to actually go 11 blocks forward and back when I hit the button. You ready? Let's harvest, shall we? Now one other setting here, let's see, what do you set to? Always place when stopped, place only in starting position. That's what we want. So this whole set of blocks is going to change from blocks to an entity. And I don't want it to turn back into blocks until it comes back to the starting position, which is exactly where we are here now, right? So let's watch. Oh yeah, that's what's up. Okay, cool. So we learned what happens with <laughs> we learned what happens with that, which is okay. It's not the end of the world. Now, did I miss a row? I might have missed a row. I guess I did. But all my stuff should be in here. Sweet. How cool is that? How cool is that? So you're one, two, three, four, and you're one, two, three. Oh, I did miss a row. Look at me. I am a genius. Uh, so linear chassis. Is gonna go there. I want now you to be moved, right? Obviously, let's not forget the glue. By the way, if you have glue in your offhand, when you place the block, it'll automatically put glue there. Pro tip, pretty cool. Uh, so let's have, maybe I'll just make this a double chest. Does that sound cool? Or I could just move things, that might be better. So it doesn't like the too tall industrial foregoing thing. Not that that's a huge surprise to me. I was curious how it would handle that. Wonder how it handles things like like sugarcane. But for sure, and you know what else? It didn't replant them, which is interesting. It didn't replant them, but maybe I'll get some beetroot seeds and make this just beetroot over here. Cool. Now every time we push this button, it's going to go ahead and move and harvest all our crops that are fully grown and it'll replant them automatically. And that is pretty cool beans right there. And if we wanted that to move a little bit faster, we absolutely could make that happen. Um, we could adjust the speed here so we can make this double and double. And that's about as fast as you can go. Or you can speed these guys up, right? And now he's running a little bit quicker. I like it. I like it. But I kind of liked the slow speed. As weird as weird as it sounds for Dara to say I liked the slow speed, I liked the slow speed. I liked how it looked when it was moving slowly. So that's cool beans, right? So now let's get um, a building gadget. And let's build to me some, some dirt, shall we? Build to me. Because what I'd like to do is fill most of this area in with dirt. Cool. So how does that look? Pretty cool. Now we could manually do this or we could super cool do this. What do you think? I think super cool, right? I think super cool is definitely the way to go on this setup. Uh, so what I'm going to do is make sure that there's a way into this crazy little area. Is there some kind of timer in this pack? That's a really good question to which I do not have the answer. Let's see what we got by way of a timer. 
Uh, there's gauges and switches. Glass interval. Industrial day timer clock signal timer control shift help emits a signal with a defined on off time configured using buttons on the front blue on time yellow off time green signal ramp up and down red output power the timer is placed in standby mode for setup click on the front face to set it to run mode output eh, it might be a little more complicated than I want how about the timer from RF tools yeah timed redstone pulses how's that sound I like the sound of that so we could boop and let's make sure that you are let's say like every right now I'm gonna make it every 60 ticks which will be every three seconds now it seems too short how about how about how about every 200 ticks would be 10 seconds so let's make it 400 ticks every 20 seconds Pause while redstone active. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Oh, you don't want to rotate on me, do you? What kind of direction are you facing? He's just like, I'm just guessing. Okay, cool. Now, when that timer completes, we should see some cool stuff happening here in about five seconds. So he will roll out from there. Assuming that we've given him the appropriate ample room. There he goes. Nice. Nice. Oop. And then retracts. Cool. Cool. How cool is that? Isn't that super cool? I think that's super cool. Now the alternative is... So you're a little actually... Yeah, because he takes like a good bit of time here. So let's like increase that 10x, right? We'll make it 4,000 ticks. So every 4,000 ticks is when it'll go, right? I like that plan. Now, alternatively, if we wanted to, what we could do is have the chest, rather than being on top, be behind. Do we like that plan? I kind of like that plan. I don't think we need most of this stuff just yet anymore. Because what I do want to do is clear all this out in one fell swoop. Make my life a little bit easier. That is neat. That is neat. So let's just try it out with the button. That should be fine, right? And you notice you can't access the chest while it's moving. Because it's not really a block at this point. It like removes all the blocks from the world, turns it into an entity that looks like all these blocks, lets it move, and then puts them all back. Would be my guess as to how this works. But I'm not 100% certain. But yeah, how cool is that? Right? And now what we could do is we could pipe items out of here. Does that sound like a plan? I think so. I think so. So, how do we want to handle that? Because what we could have is an interface, right, from refined that all the items pipe into and then get sucked into the system. We just need some more cables. A few more cables, hopefully not too many more cables. All right now, I would like to try something cool here. What should we use for the interface? I was going to do something now. I don't know. Let's try a logistical transporter. So here's a question, right? I want to I want to test this and I'm not 100% sure if it'll work. Right. If you're moving so he disconnects from his logistical transporter, I want to make sure when he gets back, he reconnects. And I'm hopeful that that's what's going to happen. I'm pretty sure it will. It should, hopefully, but we're going to find out. Boom. Ha 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 ha. That is awesome sauce. Look how much awesome sauce that is. All right. So that is how it goes, right? And then we just run this guy like underground-ish. I like it. I like it. I hope you guys like it because I like it.
Is that my basement? Yeah, it is actually kind of my basement. That's cool. Sweet. Where am I? Oh, I know where I am. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, this actually works perfectly. So I can now do this. And that is farming with create. Very simple moving platform. Very, very simple moving platform. But, in my opinion, a pretty cool way to do it, right? And hey, look, he's already moving again. Perfect. Right? And he'll just move every now and then. Right? Every 4,000 ticks, he'll decide to move. Dude, that is awesome. I'm sorry. That is just super cool. If anything he picks up, he goes ahead and does the thing, right? Get a couple speed upgrades for that. Make it a little bit quicker. I, not that we really need them, to be fair. I think the way this is designed is it doesn't really need a whole lot of speed upgrades in here, but meh. Doesn't hurt to have a little bit of speed. And that is pretty cool. And I'm going to go ahead and call that ye olde wrap it up point for the episode. So that's kind of well hidden, which I like. Which I like. I like it a lot. That is cool. Cool, cool. I don't know. You guys tell me what you think. I think it's pretty neat. But I'll, I'll defer to the comments. All right. Donald 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time uh, to have some more fun with this awesome mod. Uh, and lots of other things that we need to do. All right, guys. Take it easy.